Even though the EU is saying this is not good enough, what do we know about the potential for any kind of compromise? I was reading about a customs partnership over the weekend. Yeah, we're not there yet, are we, Neighbour? But the uh, and the sounds don't seem to be all that promising this morning. Perhaps why we're seeing that slide in UK assets overnight. But really, the key sticking points from last week still remain, and we're hearing little by little, uh, small nuggets of information about what is being decided, or at least updated on those two things. One is customs, customs checks uh, across the uh, across the island of Ireland, and the other is the extent to which the parties in Northern Ireland have a veto or consent, as Manus and I were talking about a little bit earlier on. Uh, what you mean there about the customs? partnership is interesting because perhaps there's some room to manoeuvre where Northern Ireland leaves the EU Customs Union and yet stays adhe adhering to the terms of the Customs Union uh, with the EU. It's very complex and that's one of the pushbacks that we're getting from Europe at this point. Uh, on the other side of things, so that's on the customs side, on the other side of things, the veto, perhaps the UK has softened its stance a little bit there, but the DUP not happy with that. Michel Barnier saying that a lot of what is being proposed by the UK right now is very untested. So we're waiting for any details of what it is around customs and consent that is actually new here, uh, whether key participants in the UK decision-making process will be on board. And talks continue as the clock ticks today in Brussels. Anna, good to see you this morning. Um, great work in, in, in Northern Ireland last week. It was nice to see you home. Um, tell me this, in terms of, it, it is about the untestability, isn't it? It is about the unknown. And therein lies the point. It's not about the proposition, but it's about the robustness of the proposition. And therein lies the objection, potentially from the DUP and from Leo Varadkar, in regards to the Good Friday Agreement. Right, so the DUP have been pushing back over the weekend saying they don't want, actually in the Italian press, saying that they don't want anything that distances them further from the, the rest of the, uh, from, from Great Britain and the customs union uh, with them. Uh, so there's some pushback from that particular side of things. But really, yeah, it comes down to the details, the untested nature of it, as Michel Barnier said, and the short amount of time that remains. Remember, this week, uh, the d a deal has to be done by Wednesday, essentially, because Thursday and Friday is when the EU leaders meet. And they're not going to be wanting to go through the actual detail, the actual legal text themselves. So some kind of detail, uh, sorry, deal needs to be made Monday, Tuesday of this week to enable the leaders to sign off on something Thursday and Friday. And then even if that is achieved, parliamentary support could still be elusive. We've had pushback from the DUP. We've heard from the Labour Party that they seem unlikely, although they'll wait to see the details, they seem unlikely to support Boris Johnson's plan at this point. And obviously the Liberal, Liberal Democrats feel the same way, if not stronger. The SNP have been saying that they want to bring a vote of no confidence in the Boris Johnson government. Remember, this is still a minority government. This is not a leader, despite the pomp and the ceremony we're going to see today with the Queen's speech. This is not a prime minister with any kind of majority. And in that context, votes of no confidence, push towards a general election, all of that still uh, very much possible as we head with just uh, two weeks or so to go until the, uh, the Brexit deadline.